Hi, this is Eric, and this is episode number 20 of Survival Medicine. This is cold-related injuries. Um, I'm getting a nice backlog of uh, cool things to talk about, and uh, this was brought up by Mike, and he was interested in both heat and cold-related issues. Um, and so uh, now that we're in December and there's a lot of people in the Midwest under extreme winter conditions, I thought this would be a good one to bring up and talk about. Well, a lot of times when I think of cold-related injuries and hypothermia and frostbite, I always think of, you know, K2 and uh, Denali and Mount Everest and you know, these hikers that go on these um, exposures and uh, get this terrible frostbite and lose fingers, toes, and ears and noses. But here domestically, uh, there's severe winter conditions going on right now. And in fact, uh, just a couple days ago, and there was reports of multiple motorists stranded uh, in these uh, uh, snow drifts and, uh, and basically stuck in uh, exposed to extreme conditions. And there's been cases of people that have been stuck in their cars for up to 12 hours in these freezing temperatures that have lost hands and feet. Um, so this is not something that's isolated just to uh, these Discovery Channel kind of mountain adventure people. Now, there's a couple different types of cold injuries we're going to talk about. Um, there's the non-freezing, freezing, and then just the global hypothermia. Non-freezing consists of frost, nip, chill, blain, and trench foot. <clears throat> the freezing ones is uh, frostbite. Now, where does frost, nip start and, and frostbite start? Well, it's just it's a continuum. Uh, and so this is just a matter of uh, the degree of temperature and the duration of exposure. So again, just think of this as a continuum, uh, and there's no clear defining line between where one stops and one starts. Now here's the spoiler for the entire uh, presentation. Rewarm things as soon as possible. Whatever's cold, make it warm, and make it warm as fast as you can. And that's kind of the bottom line to treating all of these cold injuries. Now chillblains and trench foot, this is a combination of moisture and cold. Um, and you can get this uh, kind of wet, wrinkly tissue that then gets blisters and uh, uh, the skin sort of rubbed raw. Um, the biggest problem with this is some secondary infection and some pain, um, but in, in and of itself it's not anything too dangerous. Now interestingly enough, trench foot can actually occur in temperatures as warm as 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so if you've got uh, some cool temperatures with moist feet and perhaps some tight-fitting boots, uh, you can de develop trench foot just with that. So um, all the uh, camping wisdom of changing your socks frequently is very important. Uh, this is what uh, trench foot can look like in some uh, mild to moderate cases. You can see the blistering there. Uh, and so the treatment of this again, keep things warm and dry. Change your socks. Use foot powders. Uh, boots that are too tight that might restrict blood flow uh, can make this problem a little bit worse. So you want some very well-fitting boots. Uh, if you feel any hot spots or you start having some tingling or decreased sensation, you may want to readjust your boots. Uh, and again, change your socks frequently if you're going to be in uh, these types of situations. Now frost nip is sort of the beginnings of frostbite. This is a mild cold injury. You can actually get ice crystals forming in the uh, surface tissues, the skin. Um, but again, this is no uh, no permanent damage associated with this. Um, everybody that's been out in some extreme temperatures for a period of time has probably experienced a little bit of this. Uh, the areas become pale. Um, some of that's just restriction of blood flow. You get vasoconstriction so that the body keeps uh, warm blood to the core, and you can also get a little tingling and numbness. Again, what you do with this is you just rewarm the tissues. Now, if frost nip is not interrupted and things progress and continue, you move into frostbite. And this this can lead to permanent tissue damage uh, due to these extreme temperatures. Uh, and I would think of this like a bad burn. You, know, you can get a mild first degree burn where you just have some redness. You can get a second degree that actually has blistering and some tissue damage, but nothing that's too deep or will be too permanent. And then you have this third degree, which involves nerves, muscles, tendons, deep structures uh, that can uh, be permanent and very debilitating and very severe. And so frostbite, I would kind of match in the same way uh, that we sort of look at burns. Now frostbite, you've got to do rapid rewarming. Um, you've got to get the frozen tissues unfrozen because uh, the sooner you can get that done, the, the more tissue salvage will occur. Now, if there's a possibility that if you start rewarming and then it's going to refreeze, 
and you want to avoid that because the refreezing process will actually make things worse. So you need to know that when you start the rewarming, it's going to occur and it will con uh, continue until success is, uh, or your target is reached. Um, now with frostbite, again, you can have significant tissue damage. Uh, anytime you disrupt the skin, you disrupt blood supply, um, secondary infections a, a worry, so you got to watch for that. And if the tissue actually dies, then you, uh, you need surgery to remove that gangrenous, that dry gangrene, uh, dead tissue. Here's some examples of frostbite. You can see the black of the fingertips. Those, that's dead. Uh, this person will lose that area of blackness. Uh, all that will be removed. Uh, you can see on the toes, they'll probably uh, remove most of their toes, uh, if not all of them. Now here's a picture of a guy's hands. Uh, this gentleman was stuck in his car for about 12 hours under uh, freezing conditions. He didn't have any supplies in his car and was just exposed to this, um, you know, freezing temperatures and, and wound up losing, you can see most of his digits uh, and also his uh, toes and part of his foot. Now, let's talk about global body hypothermia. So the definition of hypothermia is any body temperature, core body temperature that's below 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. Now, global hypothermia is exquisitely dangerous and can cause lots of problems. Now, as you start getting colder and colder, uh, you vasoconstrict, meaning the vessels in your skin and extremities pinch down. So you limit blood supply to the extremities. This is your body's way of protecting core warmth that's trying to protect your heart, lung, and brains and will sacrifice the extremities in order to do that. You can also get something called a cold diuresis, meaning the kidneys start uh, activating and you start uh, basically urinating a lot and so you, this can lead to dehydration. Uh, it disrupts some cellular function, you can cause some liver problems uh, and something that's very common with severe hypothermia is low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. Now as this progresses to severe hypothermia, and now we're talking about temperatures less than 86 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, people get really confused. Their brains quit working. They start doing things that are actually going to be detrimental. Uh, cellular functions continue to shut down. Your heart becomes very sensitive to minor irritations and can go into a fatal rhythm like ventricular tachycardia. Now you also see something called terminal uh, burrowing and paradoxal undressing. What happens is you get this vasoconstriction so it shuts down blood supply to your extremities. Now at some point your body can't maintain that anymore and things start just quitting and so the vessels dilate and blood r rushes back into the extremities that are frozen and now this hot blood comes to them and so people get the sensation that they're really hot and burning and also their brain's not working, they're confused so they feel hot even though they're freezing to death and so because of this uh, sensation of feeling warm they'll actually take their clothes off and many people have found absolutely naked in a freezing environment and that's what this is, this is a combination of your body shutting down and, and not being able to maintain uh, blood in the central part as well as your brain not working. And then as you get severe uh, cold to the brain, you get a, a very primitive uh, function that's activated with terminal burrowing where people will just try and dig a hole and you know, they'll rip their fingernails out uh, in an attempt to uh, you know, dig a burrow to, to try and get warm. So this is a very primal uh, reflex in the brain and when this occurs uh, basically this person is going to be dead. So again the key to this is rewarming, rapid rewarming. Um, you want to watch for low blood sugar if you don't, if you're not able to test whether they have uh, low blood sugar you may just want to empirically treat it. Just go ahead and give them you know orange juice or a candy bar or something with sugar in it. Um, if patients are very hypothermic, you want to avoid jostling them, especially if they were in some cold water, you want to bring them out horizontal. Don't stand them up quickly. They can drop their blood pressure. They can go into a fatal cardiac rhythm. So handle these people very carefully. Now, rewarming, uh, in the emergency room, we can do all kinds of things. We can pump heated saline through them. We can put chest tubes and put circulate um, hot saline close to their heart and really aggressively rewarm them. Out in the field that's not really possible. Um, so you want to be creative and do everything you can. Uh, hot packs, uh, hot water on the extremities, um, multiple blankets, uh, you know, avoid wind, anything that's going to cause convection heat loss or uh, conduction heat loss. Uh, but you want to get them back to a normal temperature as fast as possible. 
Now, if you're one of our friends up in areas of the country that get very cold, uh, I would strongly urge you to put something in your car, uh, you know, just blankets, uh, something that generate heat um, and things to help take care of yourself that if you happen to get stuck in the middle of nowhere uh, or even in a city that has, you know, severe snowstorms, I am... It, this doesn't take too long to occur. If you're just stuck for a few hours, you can get yourself into some serious trouble. So again, uh, thanks uh, for watching, and everybody stay safe and warm.